Okay, so let's get back inside this house for just a moment. Wait. What is this? Why is there a block here? Uh, I bet he was a stupid Enderman, wasn't it? Uh, I'm gonna, I, I hate Enderman. Ah, what? Ah, ah, the silver fish! Ah, run away! Run away! Ah, run away! Run, run! Where did he go? Did it? No, could be. Couldn't be, could it? Oh my goodness, no. They're learning. We're all dead. We're gonna die. Hello everyone, my name is Dread Killer, and well, I was actually reading a comment, <laughs> and excuse the bad acting, I was intentionally trying to make that really, really bad. But anyways, so, you can probably guess what today is going to kind of be about. This is kind of a, a little bit of challenge accepted. I was reading a comment in a video um, of Zisto playing Pantheon, um, one of the more recent videos, and someone mentioned how they, when they saw a silverfish in the nether, they were, they had like a horrible idea as if, oh, what if they could burrow into any type of block? And, well, I just thought of something to make it work, and, well, you probably shouldn't have, um, have mentioned that because now I kind of want to use it in something. So, I will kind of explain how this works. Obviously, I don't I don't know where the silverfish died. I could probably tear up this entire house trying to find it. It is actually um at least I can find out which I can find out where it is by going into game mode. Uh, that will kind of give it away. So, let me kind of explain the technique here a little bit. I'm going to summon a silverfish. Now, it's going to just wander around for about 15 seconds. And after about 15 seconds, it is going to die. And when that happens, we will see it right there. And it died right here. So this block, if I dig all the way around it, you will see that there's nothing suspicious. Except what? There's a little bit of a glitch with this. And because of that, you can probably tell already what this is or what it relies on. But this block right here is the silverfish block, which happens to be a grass block. Um, grass typically cannot hold a silverfish, but in this case it can. And let me just kill the silverfish. And you'll see that it also killed something called silverfish block, which was the thing in here. So what's going on? Well, let me kind of step you through the process a little bit. First, by going over the command blocks, and then I'll kind of try to show you a visual cue of it. So this is just starting up the normal fill clock. Um, so this is doing the filling. This is basically setting these blocks constantly. The first command that really is important is this one. And it's kind of hard to um, see it all, so I'll have to go over it slowly. But it's going to basically take any silverfish in the game and it's going to add one to a scoreboard objective that I've called silverfish tick. So if I go into a scoreboard objective set display sidebar silverfish tick, you will see this and let me um, sometimes it doesn't clear. need to fix that a little bit. It's because I killed the silverfish before it actually did the process, but if I were to now summon a silverfish, you will see that that goes up, and when it hits 300, when that silverfish, um, the score of it hits 300, in just a moment, it dies, and the score goes away. What happens is, 
that any silverfish um, within a radius of 50 units to a player that has a score of over 300 or 300 or more gets a, another value in um, a, another scoreboard object called in Q. Now this can be called anything, obviously it doesn't matter. But it just sets a value there and the next thing we do is for any of the silverfish that are in the Q let me kind of go back to the beginning here it executes a command at a random player which executes an execute command of course because you have to it's interesting how this stuff works isn't it but what this does is it targets any type of silverfish in a radius of 50 that has a score in Q minimum value of 1 and it summons an armor stand um, this armor stand has a few properties. It summons the armor stand three units in the ground. Um, it has no no gravity, so it won't fall through if there's no blocks below it. So if the silverfish dies in, for example, a ceiling, it's it still works. Um, invulnerable one meaning you can't punch it to death. You can't break it with your fist. It's invisible, so that you obviously can't see it, and it has a custom name of silverfish block. Now what's happening? is constantly this the command block system here is targeting all so um oh, this kills this uh, this command block actually um kills the solar fish after um everything is done with it so the solar fish is dead um and then the, this next one executes at a random player again and any armor stand that is named solar fish block a command is executed there it tries to detect if there's air two blocks above it, and if there is, it'll summon a solar fish two blocks above the armor stand. And then it will also kill the um, the armor stand once again if it detects air. So if I change this to... Oh, not there, let's change this to... It would be this one. Instead of being negative three, let's first off um kill all. I need to get used to doing that because I've messed up a few times and caused waves and waves of silverfish to spawn. So I'm gonna actually spawn it two units above the ground, two units above it, and this means that over here I'm going to need to detect negative three um, units. So I'll need to fix this afterwards. But once this is all set up, this should work, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to being visible. And now if I summon a silverfish block, I mean not silverfish, you can see the silverfish appears. And it's wandering around just like we expect it to. And when this score hits 300, an armor stand appears. <coughs> now typically this would be invisible and it would be under the ground, but I've done this just to visualize it so we can see that if we break the block that this armor stand is below, the armor stand gets destroyed first and then the silverfish ends up being spawned. Actually I think the armor stand just yeah the armor stand gets destroyed after. But the silverfish gets spawned and the cycle repeats. The time can be adjusted, the time that the silverfish is alive can be adjusted. Um via this single command block I can make it last 30 seconds just by going like that and now if I break this block we would have to wait for this thing to for 30 seconds so that's that's gonna be a little bit of time to what to wait for this but that gives plenty of time for the solar fist to attack the player yes it'd be evil um now, for obvious reasons, too many of these will lag your game because, well, it is using armor stands. Now, when they're invisible, they're not rendered, so it won't do much for your rendering for the client side. However, for the server side, with all these executes going on, um, it will be a little bit intensive. The thing is, I tried to make this as l l less intensive as possible by limiting it to a certain 
radius, so only armor stands within a radius of 10 will actually um, will actually be processed at all. So if I'm over here, for example, that armor stand isn't even being like it isn't even being considered. But if you have a ton of them in the same area, like solarfish spawners, obviously this could be a little bit of an issue. You might have to adjust the system a little bit. A few of these, though, however, could really be interesting because this completely changed the game. There's a few um, there's a few benefits to this. First off, you cannot tell that the block is a solarfish block until it is too late. There's no visual cue in breaking it. Um, so it's not like stone where you can just um, punch it and if it you can break it fast with your fist or slower with a pick then it is a solarfish block. In this case, no. The block is exactly how you would imagine it being. Um, a disadvantage, however, is that if the solarfish is poisoned, they do not call for help here. It might be possible to set up a system to do that, but I haven't I haven't taken the time to try to figure that out. But yeah, so that is a a system. It is I imagine it could be kind of useful. It's more of just like a gimmick thing. I don't think people are really going to use it too much in maps simply because it it is a little bit lag intensive. You'd have to really set up the system well to make it only work in certain areas, um, which is completely possible. But if you set this contraption up, you could just, for every place that I have one of these execute at R's, um, or, or any of these things basically, any of these, you can specify a, a, um, a radius so it only works a certain radius around the machine. But yeah, anyways, that will probably be it for right now. Um, the commands, if people are interested, I can put them in the description. But most people will probably, most people that will use this will probably understand what the um, the, the conceptual part of this and understand how to actually do it, and they'll be able to recreate this themselves. Plus, commands are kind of um, sensitive; they kind of need to be done in the correct order. I'll give you a little bit of a example of this. So a lot of people don't understand how to know the order in which a command block will actually be executed. Well, if you look at the, your F3 marker, you have this little corner thing in the middle. If we line this up to here, this is the origin 0, 0 of this block. So that's where the block is actually originated. Now the pattern in which um, blocks will be updated. If I place some blocks like this, um, and like that. So there's there's air in the middle there, but I'm going to just um, real quickly do a set block. And that would be one, two, three blocks below. So if I power this, a redstone block will go into the middle there. So let me explain to you the process in which this happens. The first axis that gets compared is the x-axis, so that's the red one. Starting from the origin point, it goes in this direction. So this is the one that will execute first, so I'm going to make it say 1. And then I'm going to make it... Um, say 2, so that's positive x, negative x. The next one that executes is the negative y, so if I say 3 down here, say 4 up here, and then where this blue thing is in the corner, say 5, and say 6. Now I'm pretty sure that is correct, I have messed this up a few times before though. Um, but if it is correct, it should say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in order when I place this. And, in fact, it does. And it won't do it again because there's already redstone in there. But So that's how you can kind of know the order in which the commit... Like, 
that's, that's how you know the order in which command blocks will run and it does that per block so it'll execute this command first um, it'll execute this command first because it's on the Y it goes X then Y and then Z so it'll execute this command first then this one then this one this one this one this one this one and I just place a bunch of command blocks I don't need like anything past this one so all of these goodbye that's all you need but yep so the commands are kind of a little bit sensitive so even if I did give you the commands you'd have to know how to uh, modify them to work in your world but that is about it for this video I just thought it would be neat to share this little map concept I had this idea when I read a comment so I just started working on it didn't take too long to make it work. So have a good day. Goodbye.